This big city house has a long neglected yard that's rarely used. Oh. Its hardworking owners want a cozy retreat where they can relax with family and escape the stresses of their demanding jobs. So, uh, yeah, now the fun starts. Very cool downtown location with good access, which is really, really rare. And uh, you can always tell you're, when you're downtown because the houses just seem to be that much closer to each other. We have an existing builder deck here, which is square and boring, but it really allows you to come out, sit down, and have a wonderful view of the huge red fortress here at the back of the property. This is just no good. The first order of business for me, some sort of structure back here that's a visual focal point, and what it does is it takes the whole space and ties it all in together, because right now there's nothing back here but, you know, a garden full of weeds. So I love small spaces because you can do so much. Let's go see what they think. Both Karen and Rob have demanding careers that keep them in the city most of the summer. They want a contemporary backyard retreat where they can lounge and entertain with family and friends. The new yard, uh, I'd like to see, first of all, no grass. I don't want to do any mowing. Um, and I'd like to see different spaces. All right, guys, I see a yard that is not getting used a whole heck of a lot. Tell me about your space. Well, um, we've been here for about six years. It still has the contractor's deck on the back. It's uh, basically a backyard full of weeds now. Uh, initially, uh, we got some use with our, our kids, but now it's not used at all. Right. So the neighbors behind us, the smaller home that was there got torn down yeah. and got replaced by something significantly bigger, which now presents a little bit of a challenge, yes. both with respect to sight lines, but also privacy issues. I guess our, our dream backyard would be a place that's comfortable, that we could um, spend some time as a family and maybe do some entertaining. What would your dream list be? Hot tub is high on my list. Uh, so hot tub, okay. Yep. And what else? I'd envision an eating area, a lounge area, fire pit. Our kids would love that. Yeah. So let's create some different rooms. Okay. Let's take advantage of the entire space. And no great. grass. And zero grass. Absolutely no grass. Yes. That's Perfect. Like a great I'll idea. I'll the concept. I'll show you guys. And great. We'll, uh, Thanks very much. We'll change things around here. Good. Great. Thank you. Straight off the main doors is an elevated dining and barbecue area surrounded by clear glass railings. Off to the side is a cozy nook with a privacy screen inlaid with glass blocks. A few steps down near an elegant water feature sits a circular hot tub which anchors the whole design. Moving forward is the hammock zone with an eat-in bar located just across the central pathway. At the far end of the deck is a secluded lounge zone with a circular fire pit placed in front of the deck's focal point, an illuminated clock feature, all housed under an easily retractable awning. Chunky linear pergolas run the length of the deck completing the look. We are officially open for business. Okay, so here we are, first day on the new project. And uh, first order of business is going to be taking out these deck boards, and I'm hoping that the frame underneath is in good shape, because it looks like it is. So after that, we're going to be uh, marking out right down the center of the whole project here. So the big focal point is going to be at the back. Uh, so we'll be marking out, getting our builder tubes into the ground, and then from there, moving on to using the one-man auger, digging lots of holes, boys in their toys, and making lots of noise. So good news, the uh, the existing deck is in pretty decent shape, which means I can now yeah. use this frame and extend everything off of this. So we're ready for reframing. Thirty-four foot four and an eighth. So we've got all our holes marked and we're ready to start drilling in our footings. It's a hydraulic auger, so it's basically just got a little motor down there, and it's just going to spiral right down into the ground, ripping the soil to shreds. And then we get to fill it with concrete and build a deck on it. It got really intense near the end there. Uh, this is really intense. That's true. Oh, 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 oh. seem to have found ourselves a rock. These don't like rocks very much. Now we're bringing in our Patrick. <laughs> our secret weapon. What say you, hole? <laughs> Pat's like that big brother where if anybody was picking on you, you just kind of call him over and he'll deal with it for you. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Pat's the hardest substance on this site. <laughs> <laughs> 
Kill it. Woo! Done and done. Successful dig. All right. Everyone loves digging day, but it's all done. So we're ready to uh, get the concrete coming in tomorrow. And after that, we'll be getting wood here. So uh, yeah, now the fun starts. Today is all about the framing, but before we were able to do that, we had to get our concrete saddles into place. Uh, Joe and Dave are laying out the fabric now in stone. So you can see where these three decks are gonna go, and what's gonna work really well is the fact that the sight lines, which really excite me on this project, are gonna go right from that door, boom, and right to the very back line, boom. It's gonna tie the whole space in together. It's all gonna make sense soon. So what we have here is a rotary laser. This is gonna help us to level the entire site from this spot. Dave's got a little receiver. It's gonna tell him when he's in plane with this laser, and then uh, we're gonna make little lines, and that's gonna give us uh, our height of our deck all the way around. How's it look? Perfect. That's what I like to hear. We're done rectangle number one, now we're on to rectangle number two. Two. Two? two. Now installing our joist hangers. This is what's going to give our joist all the structure. So it connects into our box beam, but this basically holds the two together. It's going to take all the weight to hold it for the rest of its life. So it's kind of like a loving partner to the joist. I think we could learn something from the joist hanger and the joist. They don't nail enough. The whole relationship just shears apart. <laughs> All right, so all three platforms are done. Paul had to leave earlier, and we are now out of wood, so we're gonna go home for the weekend. Uh, when you see this thing again, we're gonna be on to decking. Oh! So now you can see with these two spines going in how it creates a nice, straight hallway. That, right there. <laughs> it's only natural for people to focus on it. <laughs> We tore down the old deck surface but kept the frame. Holes were dug with the auger and the help of Big Brother Pat. Yeah. We leveled and framed our platforms. Oh, it's on. Paul's not here today, but regardless, we got all the framing completed. So today is all about decking, borders, and patterns. Section one done. On to the next one. Senko. So now we're starting the decking on the next level, and you'll notice that we're starting in the middle. The reason we're doing that is so that we can take our center line, work out in both directions, and have an even ripped piece on either end. You don't want to start at one end with a full board, go across, and then have a skinny board on one end. That will look like a skinny board on one end. It just doesn't look good. Two down. So now you can see with these two spines going in how this level mirrors the top level that's up against the house. So the deck boards are gonna go this way on either side and then this way right in the middle. So it creates a nice straight hallway. Right like this. Like that. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's only natural for people to focus on it. <laughs> So when we laid our deck and we ran all the boards a little bit long, that way we could cut off the edge afterwards and have a nice clean line up against our border. Now, usually we just use a chalk line, snap a nice straight line and do it by eye with a regular circular saw. But now we have this, it's a track saw. The plate of it has this groove right down the middle, which matches up with this protruding part of this track. You just line this up along your lines. This sits right on that track and then it actually plunges into the deck floor and you make your cut. Pretty nifty. Today we had a really good day. We got most of our decking done and we got a really good start on our borders as well. So next time you come here, we're gonna be working on aerial structures and all the pretty parts of the deck.
right, so we are officially cooking with gas. We got the upper level done. We got the borders all in the place. That's looking pretty good. And over in this area, today's beam day. So all those aerial structures up in the air. And working on screens as well. And we're going to be uh, using something a little unusual today. Glass block. Wild and wacky. So basically, what these are going to do is get, they're going to get laid in. So once seeing these in place, I said, hey, you know what this looks like? It looks like a clock. We've got two different size glass blocks, so we figure we're going to have another one there, another one there, all the way around. I don't know whether it's going to be a working clock or just something that looks decorative and lit up from behind, but I uh, haven't decided yet, but I think time will tell. <laughs> So what we're doing is we got the glass block here, and you can see the framework that's in, in the backside, already pre-made for it. So I've marked out where the cut's going to be. So I'm going to drill a screw through to the other side, just poke through the surface, and it'll tell me exactly where my four points are. Nice. All right, only 11 more to go. Things looking pretty sexy. We got the three, six, nine, and 12 of the clock. We got more numbers to put in, and then we're gonna be putting in a hot tub. We're gonna be putting in the barbecue area. And, uh, but right now, it's all about sexy lines. Kate and I are getting our boards up on this privacy screen here. Now this is how we finish out a time lapse. And scene. Oh. All right, that's oh. a wrap. Decking went down and we accentuated some important areas. Right there. We used our fancy new track saw, hoisted some beams, and got a start on the clock. Nice. Almost time. <laughs> Busy day in our tight confines. Jeff's already showing up, and he's going to be taking care of all this dirt-infested nastiness and making it wonderful. Heidi's showing up as well. We'll be talking to her about how she's going to style things up. Just people running all over the place everywhere. And, uh, you know, it's like being in, on the highway during rush hour. It's nuts. Hey, Paul. Jeff. How's it going? Good, buddy. Yeah? So we got a very contemporary layout. We got all these multiple decks. Obviously, lots of cool beams. Circular hot tub sitting here. Well, I really like all the different levels they have going, so I think we should really work off that and bring the entire thing up to one elevation all the way across and maybe around the hot tub, uh, and then have another step up here so that the stone will be running flush with the deck. Because you have a few different levels of deck, so I mean, we might as well have a few different levels of stone, too. So for the main patio area, as well as all the transition areas, I want to use this really nice interlocking stone. It will tie everything really well together. We can get some color that will tie nicely with the deck as well as with the house, so it's going to look great. This back zone here is the focal point of the whole design. Okay. This cool little clock thing yeah, happening nice. here. Retractable awning over the top. Then we've got all this zone all the way around here that needs to be yeah. magically filled as well. I think it'd be really nice just to flank everything in some really nice garden beds uh, with the pergola and the awning and the tall walls and all the big trees. I think it's going to be very shady. So yes. we're going to have to put in something that will be a little bit more shade tolerant. Okay. So they'll be able to grow. Um, it looks like there's a lot of work to do. No. Yeah. So yeah. I'm actually going to. Uh, We'll grab the guys and we'll get to it right away. Really? Yeah, like today. Today, an hour from now. Man, this, All right. this guy, I love this guy. I should get to work too, actually. We're helping out the landscapers because we put a load of dirt in their way and we feel really guilty, so. No, you don't. You said you were bored, that's why you're doing this. <laughs> 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 landscapers. <laughs> Uh, right now, Kate and I are getting our boards up on this uh, little privacy screen here, basically just to uh, hide the ugly fence in behind it. Now this is how we finish out a time lapse. And scene. OK. Woo, good work. Oh. All right, that's a wrap. <laughs> hey, Paul. Hello, Heidi. How are you? I am good. Good. 
And uh, we have another very, very cool contemporary project. So you do have lots of different areas, lots of different landing zones. Yes, we have all these areas that need to have a definitive purpose. Okay, well, I know I was talking to Karen, and the two boys are so excited about the idea of having a hammock. So I want to put a hammock in here somewhere. So if that okay. zone is not used yet, can we do it right there? I think that'll be great. All right. The other concern that I have is that I've got the stainless steel here. Mm -hmm. I've got stainless steel going in on the railing system, but I haven't got stainless steel anywhere else. Okay, do you know what? Then with the furniture, I can tie that in with a silver metal furniture so it all comes together. Awesome, Heidi. I can't wait to see what it looks like. All right. Fantastic. See, see, see you in a bit. All right, we are currently working on our privacy screen. So we've had to actually rip down the pieces of two by four so that the glass block, when it goes into place, will be equal distance on either side. And you can see right through it from the driveway or from the deck. We're going to have a block party. God, just make it stop. Why, why do I have to <laughs> endure such horrible puns? Sometimes you just want to work alone. <laughs> Not too shabby at all. We got more glass block screens going into place. We got the barbecue area finally prepped. Now we just need a barbecue. The next time you see it, we will have a hot tub and we'll have fire and we'll have water and we'll have more beams. We'll have awnings. We'll have lights everywhere. It's going to be one wild extravaganza. I'm loving it. One, two, three. Amazing, eh? People have no idea where <laughs> these powers come from. Right, you guys? All right. Come check out your new backyard retreat. Jeff stopped by and got straight to work. Kate and Dave made time move. Sure. Oh. Privacy screens are everywhere, and Heidi talked hammocks and steel. Final day, and it's a bit of a wet one, but who cares? Because we're finishing everything, and everything's looking fantastic. We got awnings in place. We got lights that are getting it turned on. I'm really excited about the lights. Uh, Jeff and his boys are here, and they've done a fantastic job tying all the interlock in together, doing the wonderful plantings, which is really hiding the fence line. That's making me happy. Hot tubs and water features and barbecues being done as we speak. So uh, as long as we can stay out of the cold and not too wet, we'll be getting this done. In this area of the backyard, we don't really get a lot of sunlight. We have the canopy of the trees as well as the pergola. Uh, so a great planting option are always hosses, and we have these really nice coral bell. They'll do great in full shade. They'll continue to bloom basically right from the beginning of the spring, almost right until the end of the fall. Uh, they'll keep their leaves, keep their color, and uh, keep things looking nice. Working on the major focal point of the whole design, which is this back clock area under the awning, but the real part that excites me about this is the fact that it's lights that are going to look absolutely amazing. So we'll start with the other ones. I have them on a telepathic timer. One, two, three. And now for the clock. One, two, three. Amazing, eh? You will have no <laughs> idea where these powers come from. Now, I chose to go with a circular table here for a couple of reasons. One, for traffic flow, because it is a tight deck. And also, it just ties in so nicely with all of the circles that Paul has lined up. We've got the clock, the fire pit, the hot tub, the table, and the window. Now, this is what I call taking advantage of a useless space. We started with a boring square box deck that was looking out onto weeds and a humongous brick wall. Now, we have a space that not only takes advantage of every square foot of this yard, we've got these cool illuminated glass block screens, we've got a hot tub, we've got water features, a very cool awning at the back, we've got an awesome barbecue area, and a clock thrown into boot. Heidi did some amazing styling as per usual, and Jeff tied the whole area in together with just some stellar landscaping. And as far as the brick wall is concerned, not so dominant now, is it? Let's go invite them out. Right, you guys? All right. Come check out your new backyard retreat. Wow. That's, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That is great. <laughs> and you are looking at, first off the bat, my favorite part, this eye line that goes right, right down through. the middle. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing that it's this big. Isn't that backyard. amazing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The new backyard is phenomenal. It's uh, far more than we ever expected. So nice built-in barbecue area. Did you stuck with the front of that? I just might have. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, the, the barbecue in the kitchen area is huge. We're going to be able to 
entertain large groups of people, cater stuff. This is going to be a natural extension of the uh, kitchen itself. So we've got two major focal points here. We've got yeah. a focal point going from the door back to the back screen. Now we have another one going this way. Oh, OK. See the tub? Okay. Tell me that's not a cool water That's feature. very cool. Very, very nice. cool. One of the things I loved about the circular tub idea is it plays off the circular window, and I've incorporated that all the way through. So we've got a circular tub. Right. We've got a circular fire feature. Oh, wow. And we have a circular clock at the back. That's very neat. The clock is very cool. Uh, picking up the glass bricks from the other areas is really neat. It's a very unique feature. It's definitely one of a kind. Jeff tied everything in with some landscaping. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. Terrific. It's amazing. Now, we had this brick wall. Felt like it was just You can hardly see it now. Imposing over everything. It's not, it doesn't draw the eye now, does it? Yeah. Not at all. What draws the eye is all the cool stuff going on back here. Wow, the fire is amazing. That's great. And we've got, you know, funky little retractable awning as well. That's very neat. And the furniture is great. Heidi did a great job. You have the fire room. Yes. You have the hammock, hammock room, room, and you have the bar. Right. right? The bar room. Which awesome. is also doubles as an eating area. I think it's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's incredible. It's yeah. fantastic. It's, I would never have thought we could do this with this small backyard. Pretty decent transformation. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Buddy. Thank you, Paul. You're very welcome. You guys are very well welcome. Done. Karen. Thanks, Paul. That's great. Well, they loved it. We went from a weed patch to a backyard oasis. Anytime I can transform an entire space, it is incredibly satisfying. What can I say? I love what I do. Yeah, I call this hair look the, uh, the La France. I don't know if you can see it, but I got to get a little bit more up in the front. But it definitely helps with designing and whatnot and really seeing things. <laughs> you got to design. <laughs> That's so naughty looking. <laughs>